So today I'm going to be talking about the award-winning Netflix original series called Hilda. It's a show that deserves every award and every praise it's ever gotten. I am a big fan of the show, and both me and my wife have periodically rewatched this show multiple, multiple times uh, because it is just that good. And I wanted to talk a little bit about it today because there is a good chance a lot of people haven't heard of it. When you first look, while the art is very gorgeous, when you first look at the show, um, it looks like a kid's show when you first look at it, um, and it's really not. It's something that I think most ages will be able to watch, but especially as the creators noticed that more adults were interested in the show than kids, really, um, it became a little more mature with each season and a little bit better, but never to a tone to where it became overly dark, overly dramatic, um, overly tragic, um, which is very, very good, to be honest, because... The reason I like to watch this show is because it's extremely relaxing um, and it got progressively more interesting with each season, but a little less on the relaxing side, even though it did maintain that essence. A willing blood sacrifice. What do you seek? It's definitely something that I like to watch to just kick back. Um, I don't think I've said this before. I don't think that every single show needs to be about major tragedies that we see sometimes in animes and things like that, um, movies and whatnot. I don't think that everything has to be dramatic and over-the-top gruesome and, you know, just constant tragedy. Uh, so it's kind of nice to have something every now and again that allows us to escape everything that's going on in the world right now and always has been and just brings us back to a state of just calm and relaxation. Uh, while also being entertaining, because a lot of times there are shows that are very relaxing, but they borderline and mundane a lot of times, right? And there's these periods of just nothing going on. Hilda does a really good job of maintaining that constant sense of awe and wonder, while also keeping a very relaxed tone to where there's no point where you're really stressed or on the edge of your seat watching. It just maintains that same vibe throughout all the seasons and including the movie. So we're going to talk a little bit about that show because it is one of the best cartoons that I've ever watched and I, I highly recommend it to everyone. So Hilda was created by Luke Pearson. He's a British illustrator and cartoonist. Um, this was originally an illustrated novel that was then pitched to Netflix and it became an animation. Uh, the novel, while it seems quite interesting, I've never, um, I didn't really even know it was first a novel. I've never read it. Um, so I'm just going to be focusing on the show, which is very, very good. So the show won several, several awards, and I think it deserves, again, every award it's ever gotten. It's absolutely incredible. If I had to describe this show, it's very difficult to really compare the show to anything else that's out there. It's very, very unique, not just from an artistic standpoint, um, but also from a story standpoint, a you know folkloric inspiration. It's inspired in Scandinavian folklore. Um, and just from a narration standpoint and storyline, it's very difficult to compare it. But if I had to describe a vibe for the show, it would be a combination of an anime called Freerun, uh, Sosono Freerun. That would be the vibe I would give to the show, even though the story is not the same, obviously. It's that general slice of life, calm kind of feeling for the show. While the art, I guess, could be comparable to something like Adventure Time, but definitely not either. Um, I'm very hesitant to compare it to anything, but think of Free Ren Mary's Adventure Time. That's how I would describe it. So the story centers around our adventurer, Hilda, who's this little girl who she grows up living essentially in the woods. Um, and as things get dangerous with her mom, and as things get dangerous and, you know, they progressively realize that they, you know, they're causing more problems being there for the fauna and nature, and it's putting them in dangerous situations, they decide to move to the city. When they move to the city, Hilda meets both her best friends, um, who are a pretty essential part of the uh, show as a whole as well, the other little boy and little girl that you see. And she has her little companion, Twig, which is the little deer fox um, that is quite cute and serves more than more of a purpose than just being like a little baby Yoda, like a cute part of the show to make it recognizable. He's a pretty interesting character in his own merit, which is quite interesting that they managed to develop him so well for it being a character that obviously doesn't talk, right? So that was very interesting. The show clearly has... 
Um, it's inspired in Scandinavian folklore, like I said, but it clearly has inspiration on other um, great works as well. There are characters like Woodman, which is clearly inspired in Zelda, like a Deku, you know. Um, there is a plenty of inspirations, especially towards season three. We definitely see influence from Studio Ghibli from certain movies and certain scenes, um, which is pretty cool that they made some homage to uh, those great works as well. One thing that makes Hude a little bit more unique than other cartoons, obviously other cartoons have done this, but this is something that I appreciated from the show, is episodes are not really entirely self-contained. They manage to be self-contained enough to where if you were to watch just a random episode, you would probably get what's going on if you kind of knew the lore of the show, right? It's very rare that an entire, there won't be a part two normally um, for each episode. I think, I don't recall there being any of that. There might be one instance or another of that. But generally speaking, the episodes are self-contained in that sense. But they do build on each other, right? New characters get introduced with each episode. And the show constantly makes references to other seasons. Much how Freerun, there will be things that if you only watch it once, you will miss. This show, every time I rewatch it, I notice things that I originally missed that were making reference to things from previous seasons or previous episodes of the show. Um, or something will appear on the first episode or on the very first episodes and later on episode 13 at the end of that season we see that same character that same thing and you don't even remember that he actually appeared on one of the first episodes there's a lot of these little easter eggs and things going on where you're definitely you if you like the show you'll definitely watch it more than once just because it's so it puts you in such a good vibe and and mood um, but it makes constant reference to other episodes, which is cool because it feels like there is a sense of lore building. And it is really interesting. The story and the lore of things that are going on is quite interesting. It's quite compelling. It's pretty lovely, to be honest. The art is breathtaking um, and it got better with each season. The quality of the art and the quality of animations, you can tell how much it improved from season to season. And this is one of those shows which... A lot of times shows they drag on right so we have uh, season one is the only good one and then they make a second movie or a part three and it's just it, it's not as good it's almost like filler it's almost like uh, there's no point other than making more money this is really a show where in my opinion the show got better with each season each season is better than the last um, they're all good but it's it's interesting that they managed to build on each of the seasons and actually improve the show with each one of them um, and including the movie it goes season one season two there is a movie and then season three which was the final season that came out of the end of last year um, which was very sad because i would like the show to have continued going on but it, it did get a lot of airtime uh, three seasons and a movie you don't normally see that for a cartoon that's like a netflix original so that's pretty cool that they did that. The show was actually go, supposed to end on season two and then a movie. The movie was supposed to be the ending and they, after the movie, success most likely, ended up green lighting season three, which um, I, I think was the best of all of them. If it wasn't the best, maybe season two, but it was up there. It was very, very good. I really enjoyed it. It has a pretty lighthearted but pretty decent sense of humor. It's pretty cute. All of the characters are quite endearing. Um, some characters, even the ones that are introduced as filler, they're very well done, very well designed, and again, they're, they're, every single character in this show is quite compelling. Um, even the ones that are meant to be antagonists, you end up sympathizing with them as well. Most characters are not, actually all characters, none of them are just 100% dark, 100% just evil. Um, the characters are black and white, like real people. They're, they're in a gray area of some sort, which makes them more interesting. It makes you sympathize with them a little more. It feels less lazy. It's very easy to just design an evil villain who's just a psychopath, right? Um, when it's a villain that is the way he is because of some sort of backstory, because of some sort of belief system, because of some sort of twisted way of thinking or seeing the world, it's a little more interesting, right? Because you end up seeing where they're coming from. It's not cartoonishly evil. All of the characters are not cartoony. They're quite believable and interesting, uh, including the relate things like relationships. So sometimes the friends will get in disagreements and in fights. 
just like you know real friends do hilda and her mom often have these disagreements which a lot of times the mom and daughter dynamic can get annoying but in this show it really didn't bother me it's actually pretty cute um, and we just see a little bit of the struggle of a parent trying to let you know a single mom trying to allow her kid the freedom to be who she is which is this wild spirit uh, nature loving kid while also trying to protect her um, which is which is pretty cute one of the things that i like about this show is there is very little filler there is all the show manages to be quite relaxing while also being interesting at the same time a lot of times when shows have these dull moments of filler where they're just being relaxing there's nothing really going on hilda ov oh, has an overall vibe of relaxation while also maintaining an ongoing plot that there is always something interesting and new going on. There is no point watching this where I was ever bored of it, where I ever, you know, oh man, can we get to the good part already? Can we skip this? Never, at, never like that, never to that point. It manages to keep that relaxing and uh, slice of life tone throughout the entire show, while also always having something interesting going on in a progression of the story. Like things never happen in Hilda just for the sake of happening, just for the sake of filling time. It is very clear that they were somewhat on a budget or somewhat on a time constraint, but they managed to master, masterfully still maintain the essence of the show while also giving it a, a pretty consistent sense of continuity um, without ruining that original premise of the show and without making it boring at any point like things go on progressively and you never feel like things are just filler you never feel like you're bored you never feel like things are just going on for no reason right i like that a lot there is a very masterfully done sense of continuity and storytelling here that oftentimes you don't see in shows like i reference so so no free run I really like Free Run, and it does expand more in that sense of really immersing you and really relaxing and, you know, really taking its time to tell the story, which is great. I am all about that, but I can see how that can bore some people at some point, right? Um, it's not like that. It's It moves a little bit faster than something like Free Run would, and I compare it to Adventure Time just in this artistic sense, but it's you can probably see from what I'm showing, it's way more gorgeous than, than Adventure Time, and it doesn't share in the same silly humor uh, that that show does. It has its own lighthearted sense of humor that I thought was pretty compelling and pretty good. Overall, without spoiling much of the show, I would recommend this to anyone. It's considered and it's often called and labeled a show that is for all ages. I don't know that I would say it's for all ages just because on following seasons, especially season three, things get a little bit darker. They get a little more um, intense, not over the top at any point. Nothing's over the top intense, but definitely towards season three, they get a little more scary, a little more intense um, to where I don't think it would necessarily be appropriate for more all ages. Like I said, I think they started realizing that a lot of adults were into the show and they started tailoring it towards a more older audience. That, With that said, there's obviously nothing graphic, uh, nothing of a sexual nature or extremely mature nature. I just don't know that this is maybe something, like it's not Bluey, right? It's not something, it's not Caillou, it's not something that a toddler would watch, right? Um, probably a bit of an older kid would find it interest in this I, I wouldn't let like my little little kid watch this right and definitely as an adult i really enjoyed it so again i highly recommend hilda it is probably the best cartoon i've ever watched i um, mean i wanted to make a little bit of an homage to it and a recommendation because i am quite sad that it ended but it ended very well it was a satisfying ending where most just about everything got answered that we wanted to know overall if you haven't watched this show i highly highly recommend it unless you don't like cartoons in general i find it hard to find someone who didn't enjoy this show to be completely honest with you um if someone didn't enjoy the show let me know and let me know why because i would be very curious because this seems like something that everybody would like the only type of people that i see not liking this are people that just don't like cartoons in general or maybe they are big anime fans and they only like action animes and things like that. Uh, maybe that type of person wouldn't enjoy this. But overall, honestly, it's a complete masterpiece. It is the best cartoon I've ever watched. Not the best anime because it's not an anime, but as far as cartoons go, it's the best one I've seen. Probably ever.
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know if you enjoyed the video, and I'm happy to always make more of these. Take care.